Hi, I'm Alan Smith and welcome to the show. Well, you may have guessed the subject of the show by what I'm holding here in my hands. It's all about turkeys. So we're gonna have a lot of fun walking you through some fascinating facts about this great American bird and some of the varieties out there that are considered heritage breeds. For instance, this guy, whose name is Floyd. Say hello, Floyd. Floyd is a bronze, a heritage bronze, and it's from the bronze all the other colors or varieties of turkeys come. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank our sponsors. The garden tours are made possible by Gilbert H. Wild & Son, who've been growing beautiful perennials since 1885. Ralston Family Farms, a farm family producing delicious rice for your table. First Community Bank, whose heart is in the community, as well as Sun Patients, Super Cal Petunias, and Dragon's Breath Celosia, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Check out my website to learn more about the brands we love. Frank, I think they're ready to come out. Let's see them. All right, come on out, kids. They're really growing well. Yeah. They look great. They've, they've done well. It was in January when I sent you the eggs then. Yep, it was. They, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good to be able to hatch these old standard bred turkeys that time of year. Well, I think they are maturing nicely. They've got great color. Why do you think it's so important that we conserve these heritage breeds? Well, this is the basic genetics for everything we've got in the world, what the turkey industry started with. These breeds, we can take them back to 1840, 1849, and this was the beginning. What defines them as heritage is that they can really reproduce all on their own. They're slow growing. Uh, there's no artificial insemination uh, required to produce the next generation. One of the number one things that make a heritage turkey is not the color of the feathers. That has nothing to do with it. It's, it's their genetics. It's how they're made, their conformation. Mm -hmm. Their body type. That long leg, that long breastbone that allows them to, to live a long life. That they have not been altered to be short-legged or heavy-breasted and so they're normal turkeys. It's the bronze that's the oldest and I guess the largest of the heritage turkeys, isn't it? Yeah, they're the most important because they carry the genetic genes, the, the code to make everything else. Even our modern industrial turkey gives its history back to the bronze. They're the key to, to saving the standard bread or heritage turkey. But what we don't have anymore uh, is breeders, serious, long life, dedicated breeders. To do what you're doing here, I mean, like what you've been doing with the slates, you've been at it for years and years yes. and years. <laughs> 10 years, as a matter and of fact. I remember my mentor, Norman, uh, after 40 years of him coming to my farm every fall to help me pick out the breeders, he said, well, you have finally learned. Uh, it's a lifelong learning yeah. process. Yeah. You know, in the old days, maybe there, wasn't, there was not an urgency because there was many, many turkey breeders across the United States and lots of people with this knowledge. And we're now we're down to just a handful. Yeah. This is our American history. This is th the living Thanksgiving. Um, these birds carry certain genetic characteristics that's only found in them. As my mentor, Norman, told me, he said, if we lose the old original standard bronze, you've lost it all. If you follow me on Facebook, you know that we have a little fun around here with special guests. We've had Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily, along with Georgia Pellegrini, and the Beekman Boys. In fact, the Beekman Boys are here today. We always have a lot of fun with projects with our guests. Now, if you don't know the Beekman Boys, their story's really interesting. You see, Josh and Brent, they come from New York City, and these are two guys that left the big city and bought a farm, and now they're sharing their experience with others. After taking in a neighboring farmer and his herd of dairy goats, the Beekman boys are producing soaps and cheeses that are catching the attention of people around the country. Yeah, yeah. 
So why don't we take a look at the turkeys? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't done turkeys in several years, so we might be rusty. Well, these are blue slates and black Spanish. Oh. All right, guys, we got a nice little flock of them going on here. Gorgeous so, birds. Don't you think a, a couple of them look great on display for our party? Oh, oh that's gosh. a good idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you guys that. catch a few and uh, I've got to run. We'll catch up later. What? Do you, do you know how to catch turkey? How hard can it be? Josh, you be ready for them over there. Here, turkey, turkey. Oh, got it. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. All right, let's go. Let's take it to Alan. Hey, guys. Got oh. him. Got him. You got, got a him. black one. That's a black Spanish. Yeah, any yeah, beauty? It is. It is well, he put up the fight. But don't you think people want to see the blue slate? I think you need to go get a blue slate. Maybe even a pair of them. Two. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do with this one? I, I think you better put him back. Oh, I got a better idea. I don't know how we got invited to P. Allen Smith's house and have to cook the turkey ourselves. But, uh, I'm Brent. And I'm Josh. And we are the owners of Beekman 1802 Farm in Sharon Springs, New York. We raise 110 different varieties of heirloom vegetables in the garden. So uh, we raise our meats and uh, we can and freeze and dehydrate and everything you can do to preserve food through the winter and that's what we eat. What if I pulled out another bird? A rabbit! No. The key to keeping a heritage breed turkey or any poultry moist is to brine it first. Brining can help soften everything up. This is a simple one. We're just going to do coarse salt, some sugar. And a brine is basically a liquid and a salt. Anything else in, uh, that you put in addition to that is just adds a little bit of extra flavor. So we usually brine our birds with water, salt, sometimes a little um, wine, sometimes a little apple cider, and then any host of spices or herbs that you would use in, in poultry cooking. Grab me some rosemary, dried rosemary. There's nothing to eat a place. Right you could pretty much use anything in, the, in this brine, any sort of flavor that would use with poultry, sage. It's not going to give it a ton of flavor. Um, that's going to come in the cooking process, but for the brining, just to soften it, the main thing you need to get in there is salt. All throughout the year, you buy so many different spices for recipes, and then you don't use the rest of the container. Throw them into your brine. You never know what's going to work out. All right, so we're going to put our brine, and you really just need it in a, in a pot uh, big enough to hold the turkey. Well, we like to call ourselves accidental farmers. Uh, we both grew up in very rural areas. I grew up in North Carolina and Josh grew up in Wisconsin. So we both grew up in families that gardened for food and, and things like that. And then we both moved to the city, New York City, and had our big careers. And then really bought the farm as a weekend getaway. And uh, shortly after that, in 2008, in the big recession, we both lost our jobs. And so all of a sudden we had this huge mortgage on a farm in upstate New York. We had inherited 80 goats from a neighboring farmer, and we said, we're gonna make a business out of this farm. Oh, this one's heavy. This is gonna be a good one. And then you're just gonna fill it with water. I let that soak for how long? 24 hours? 40 yeah, a good, 24 hours is good. In the refrigerator, obviously, you don't wanna leave it out at room temperature that whole time. So overnight, it's just gonna suck up all that salt and all that moisture and um, make the bird nice and juicy. Well, heritage breed turkey, like any heritage breed meats, they have stronger flavors than a lot of the meats you'll find in grocery stores. And especially in poultry, what you'll find is they can be a little tough if they're cooked wrong. All right, now, after 48 hours, we're gonna get the turkey out of the brine. This is probably the most important thing when preparing a bird, I think. You wanna get that beautiful, crispy skin you know, not, not the tough uh, leathery skin. It has to be so totally dry. The entire bird, inside and out, you want as little moisture as possible um, mm -hmm. when you put it in the oven because the steam, what the steam does is it boils, mm -hmm. you know, basically boils the skin. It makes the skin too chewy. Turns it into leather, so. And the inside's gotta be dry too. So to cook the heritage uh, turkey, we stuffed it with lemon and orange, which just give it a little bit of citrus essence while it's cooking and then coat the top with olive oil and salt. Very simple. 
And then we're going to just sprinkle a little salt yeah. all over. And then why don't you get about two cups of water to put into the bottom of the pan. And then it'll be ready to go into the oven. Another key is tuck the wings underneath. This looks like it's gonna hurt the bird, but trust me, they won't mind. There we go. You gotta have a little bit of muscle when you do this. There, perfect. Beautiful. If you have some cooking yes. string, you can tie the legs together so they don't splay out as you're roasting. If you cook a heritage breed the way you would cook a supermarket breed, it's gonna dry out and be leather. So the way to cook a heritage bird is you start it very high, but then you turn it down, the oven temperature down, and you let it cook very slowly so that the meat has a chance to tenderize itself as it cooks. Long and low is what we say. So a 400, 425 oven, that's what you wanna, you wanna start it very hot, and then about 30 minutes you wanna turn it down lower than you would normally cook a turkey, down to about 300, 325, and you wanna cook it long. So start high and then long and low, and then the sinews in the meat will have a chance to loosen up and stay tender. You can basically either brown a turkey in the beginning or the end. Um, so we're going to protect it in the beginning and then at the end remove it until you get the skin at the right temperature. And now we're not trying to create an airtight seal here because that's, that would just steam the bird. We're just trying to protect the skin from browning. Well, heritage breeds of any animal, we need to, we need to care about them, we need to preserve them. As in any biological species, us, plants, anything, variety of genes is what makes us healthy and also protects against diseases and pestilence. There aren't very many different varieties of turkeys left in the supermarket. So if there is a specific turkey disease, it can wipe out all the turkeys in America. So by growing different breeds, uh, historic heritage breeds, um, you're sort of diversifying the gene pool. All right. all right. Now while that's starting to cook, we should get started on the glaze, right? Let's go. Like all you need for a glaze is a little bit, little bit of sweet and a little bit of salt and a little bit of fat. And sometimes a little bit of alcohol, but not in this Doesn't one. Doesn't hurt. So in this one, we're gonna take three cups of apple cider. I'm sure Alan squeezed his own. And then about a tablespoon and a half, you tell me when, mm, of soy more, sauce. A little more, a little more. I like it saltier. All right, good, perfect. And then we're gonna bring it to a simmer. And we're going to first bring it to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer until it's reduced by about half to two thirds. And that will go pretty quickly. Um, and what you're going to wind up with a great salty apple syrup. Now the key about glazing, a lot of people just you know continually baste the, the turkey the whole time, but since this is relatively high in sugar, you really don't want to do it until the last 45 and minutes or so. And this will give you that beautiful brown, brown bird that everybody that's on like on the cover of every magazine, you know. Yeah, if you do it for any more than 45 minutes, you're gonna have a beautiful just blackbird. Well, I think this is a Spanish black turkey, so so if, be if fitting. so if we mess up, we'll just say it's yeah, it's a it's a heritage glaze. Yes, <laughs> no, the skin always looks like that. We're gonna have a little fun with Josh and Brent while they're away. We're gonna switch out the turkey. the evidence. So good. But what about the bird? We need to check oh. the bird. Oh, he doesn't need a rhubarb float. <laughs> <laughs> we should make a float for the bird. Josh, can you give me the mitts there? Yeah. This thing is going to be hot. All right, yeah, we go. Wow, it's smelling really good. Okay, there you go. Alrighty. Uh, oh. oh my God! <laughs> what happened? You it's guys, shrunk. it shrunk. Was this on the <laughs> weight reduction plan? <laughs> oh my God! It was on the rhubarb plate. The rhubarb plate. <laughs> so don't worry, the turkey's safe. But we just had to have a little funny with you guys. Yeah, that's fine. It's down in the other kitchen cooking, so it'll be great. Great. Yeah.
know about you, but I love leftovers, particularly after Thanksgiving. All that great turkey. So one of my favorite things to do is to take some Swiss cheese, some great bread, roasted turkey, put this in the oven, warm it up, add arugula, and some of my homemade cranberry apple chutney. Let me show you how to make it, it's really easy. Now this is a Royal Palm Tom, one of the great heritage breeds, but it's one of the Johnny Come Latelys compared to the bronze, which we saw at the beginning of the show. This particular variety was developed in the 20s in, the, in Florida, and then were recognized in the 1970s by the American Poultry Association. It's a beautiful heritage breed that doesn't get as large as the others, really wasn't uh, created for production, but mainly for small farm use. Uh, they're great foragers and great for collecting insects and make a beautiful flock. Of course, to conserve these great breeds, what we have to do is get them back into the food system where they can be raised on small farms and purchased by you. This is one way we can conserve diversity as well as honor the agricultural heritage these birds and other animals have given us. I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as I have and hope to see you soon. Okay, Vern, let's head back. Good boy, go check out those girls. <laughs>